Can you just explain where the situation is with Anthony and also what you see in him, having worked with him at Ajax, that you think will make him a success at Manchester United? Uh, first, we have to sign him. So um, there's agreement between the clubs, but the paperwork is not done. So, um, so I cannot go too deep in, in that fact. Um, OK. Uh, would, would he hopefully fill a position that you think is important? Uh, offense, offensive department still, uh, we need to strengthen that, that squad, our squad, because um, we have many games to cover. From now on, we go in, in three games a week, every third, fourth day. And as you know, uh, especially from offensive players, uh, um, they are quicker fatigued because they have to run more, they have to run more high intensity. Um, uh, we expect that from them and our way of play. So we need numbers there, but not only numbers. We need so we don't know, uh, need only quantity. We need quality. Um, we're led to believe that Martin Dubravka is also likely to sign for the club before the deadline. If that deal is done, will that be the end of the signings for Manchester United, or could you sign someone else? I think so. Uh, that will be the uh, for this for this window. It will be the end. But uh, when there is great opportunity, you have to be always alert as as a top club. And then uh, we we'll discussed last week. Um, Eric, where does this leave uh, Cristiano Ronaldo with Anthony's incoming? Clearly, he wants to play. Does this restrict his game time more? Is he is he still part of the plans? Clear. Uh, of course, <laughs> what I just uh, said, we, we need quality plays and, and you need more uh, to cover all the games and uh, to keep um, also the consistency going and uh, that is what we strive for. I know you said to Simon there that that might, might be it, but is Aaron Wan-Bissaka still part of your plans? There's talk of Serginio Des coming in from Barcelona, who you know, of course, from Ajax. Um, of course, Aaron is still in and he will keep, he will stay in. So we, this squad, uh, we will go from, from September uh, till minimum January, but we will play with this squad this season. And just, just on your upturn in fortunes, the, the last two games, um, is, I mean, it's the same players. Is that purely being down to a, a change in attitude and, and, and commitment and, and the drive that uh, you, you've instilled in them? Uh, I see it as a start. Yeah? I think we have now a good base, but this is the minimum what we have to bring. And I was happy to see that, see that turn and we have to, to keep that. Uh, to uh, to get uh, to keep his spirit and to keep this winning mentality uh, because you need it if you want to get a uh, successful season you need it in the squad yeah. Eric how are you looking uh, squad wise is Victor Lindelof Anthony Martiala either them available for this game um, Victor Lindelof is training uh, with the team we will see today how far he is but uh, so just uh, one session he was in, um, he was um, uh, two, three weeks out. Martial is not available. And, and going back to Anthony, do you know how long it's going to take for that transfer to be completed and all the paperwork done? No. I don't know. Would you hope to have, have him available for the weekend? I hope, but that's what I say. I, uh, but it has to be done then, uh, because uh, the window is closed then. And what about Leicester? It seems a surprise to many people that they've started the season the way they have and that they're at the bottom of the Premier League table. How wary do you need to be about them producing a reaction to their start on Thursday? Uh, I've seen uh, a couple of games and also we knew from, um, from the last seasons uh, how good they are. And I think you can also see that in the games they played till now. Uh, uh, really, identity is uh, really cool to see. They play really good football, so we have to be really good 